Hello dear viewer and welcome to another installment of my 1 million science per minute attempt. Last time we set up a volcano space and we transformed Norvis with foundries and big mining drills. The next planet I want to go to is Gleber, so let's start the preparations. To get the biolab I need purple science. And purple science is also very useful to get more mining productivity. Making furnaces and productivity modules is pretty straightforward. The production of rails on the other hand always gives me a headache. I'm going to use a foundry to make the iron sticks, directly inserting into four assemblers, making rails. And down here prod modules and the furnaces. Well I'm not really satisfied with the way I have to align these belts, so I'm not sure about this. Oh, and in the meantime, bots destroyed the first cliff. Since the last episode, I'm importing cliff explosives from volcanoes. As you can see, I wasn't satisfied with the location of the rail production, so let's move it. Because I use a foundry to make the iron sticks, I have to put liquid metal on the main bus. Okay, nice. Works like a charm. I can see the first purple science packs on the outgoing belt. Making purple science drastically increases the stone demand of my base. That's why I have to plan ahead and secure the stone outpost down there. I will also run into energy problems soon. There's a uranium patch on 9 o'clock. Let's secure that one as well. To make it happen, this spider nest has to go. Damn, I love using rocket launchers. To expand the parameter, I'm using my 18x18 grid blueprint. And fortunately, I don't have to worry about these cliffs anymore. Okay, let's put the parameter defense over here so that there's a large enough area to mine uranium. Houston, we've had a problem. I'm now producing seven science packs, but my lab configuration only supports six. I think I will temporarily only supply the bottom row of my labs with purple science. Setting up speed module level 3 production on volcanoes. And automatic interplanetary transportation of these modules. Great, next I want to get coal liquefaction for the volcano space, also beacons and mining productivity. This old perimeter wall has to be moved to the west. Oh man, it's always a relief when you finally have coal liquefaction for the volcano space. The simple coal liquefaction consumes so much coal, it's ridiculous. The storage tank I just built on the left side holds some heavy oil to kickstart the coal liquefaction recipe. We also need a source of steam. I'm already producing a lot of steam south of the base, but this time I decided to build a dedicated chemical plant making steam, just for the coal liquefaction. And here we go, it works! The old storage tank can be deconstructed, and it seems like the transition is done. I already researched beacons, so let's set up the production in my mall. Well, the slab setup doesn't cut it, so let's build a new one. The new layout should be able to process the 12 science packs and should have some space for beacons. And this is what I came up with. But if you take a close look, there is not enough room for beacons in the middle. I have to increase the spacing between the rows of labs by one tile. Okay, that's way better, but now the red underground belts aren't long enough. 
So it seems like I have to research express belts soon. Anyway, let's continue researching for now. Now that I'm researching at full speed again, it's very clear to me that I don't have enough oil. Crude oil, that is. The base only has four oil patches and four pump jacks. The only way to increase production is by using the new speed level 3 modules and beacons. Or expanding the base and find a new oil patch. The bonus productivity you can get in Factorio Space Age is ridiculously high. So I decided to perform an additional experiment. The experiment is how far can I get without expanding my base? Just staying in the starting area with four oil patches for as long as possible. After hovering over the pump jacks I realized that the left one is producing way more oil than the others. That's why I'm surrounding it with beacons and speed modules. And if you take a closer look it seems like the amount of crude oil is actually increasing. Nice. Next up, setting up nuclear power. And if you remember in one of the previous episodes I used an assembler to barrel sulfuric acid. I'm using the logistic network and bots to ship it to this uranium enrichment facility. Setting up the production of centrifuges in my mall. Using beacons and modules will heavily increase the electricity demand of my base. Which is why I want to set up Kovarex enrichment as soon as possible. A single centrifuge should be sufficient. I like to use a dedicated chest for both types of uranium and create a loop with inserters. It's important to only take out uranium-235 when there's more than the stack size of the inserter in the chest. Similarly, the uranium-238 chest should never be completely full. Okay, let's start mining, because I'm about to brown out during nights. This process will take a while, so it seems like I have to increase the mining speed. Now that I have more crude oil, the amount of light oil cracking is not sufficient. The storage tank in the top right corner is completely full, while the petroleum gas storage tank is empty. And it seems like I should also add some more refineries. In the last episode I used foundries to transform the novice base to use liquid metal smelting. To fully utilize the productivity of the foundry, I should start making copper cables directly from liquid copper. Great, the red circuit factory on the right has been transformed. Let's continue with the left one. Foundries are just chef's kiss. As always, the red circuit production is the bottleneck of my base, so let's use speed level 3 modules. This by the way is a rate calculator, a tool that shows you exactly how many items you produce per minute or per second. And based on this information I realize that I have to increase the purple science production. Productivity modules, beacons, speed modules, all the good stuff, but I still use some efficiency modules as well because I have to be very careful about the electricity consumption. Kovarex hasn't started yet. I'm at 23 uranium-235 and currently researching mining productivity level 6. Time to design the nuclear reactor. I want to build it over here with 8 reactor cores. Supplying a nuclear reactor with water was always trouble in the past. But since the liquid overhaul in Factorio 2.0, it's really easy. Each heat exchanger consumes 10.3 water per second. This reactor will feature 112 heat exchangers. That's 1150 water per second. So a single pump can supply the entire reactor. I'm using requester chests and the bot network to transport the uranium fuel cells. And active provider chests to get rid of the depleted cells. Why am I setting up clean concrete over here? I have no idea, to be honest. 
I guess I thought clean concrete is necessary to produce reactors, but in reality they are made with normal concrete. Okay, now I have to construct a lot of blocks of turbines. I have to build round about 192 turbines for this reactor. In the past, the steam throughput in the pipes was also a huge concern. But again, since 2.0, you don't have to worry about it at all. Okay, that's 192. Can't wait to see how this reactor will look like when the bots are done building it. Seems like my mall is very busy creating the necessary heat exchangers and reactor cores. Ooh, 39 uranium-235. We are about to start the Kovrex enrichment process. And here we go. setting up the nuclear fuel cell production. Bots will ship in the required iron ore. Let's take out a couple of uranium-235 manually to immediately craft a couple of fuel cells. It's not that I'm not patient, but I'm actually browning out during nights. The first nuclear reactors have been supplied with fuel cells. As soon as they reach 500 degrees, I should make at least some nuclear energy. My initial stone patch is about to be depleted, so I have to start mining on this one. Using trains is overrated in Factorio 2.0, so let's just use a very long belt. Very nice, the new stone is coming in. My current iron ore supply is absolutely fine, but at some point I have to start mining on this patch, so why not do it right now? That's not enough plastic and steel. To solve this problem, full speed modules for my foundries. And even more beacons for the crude oil pump jacks. Speed and productivity modules for the chemical plants, it seems like the plastic production is now fine. 1.21 gigawatts of nuclear power. And this uranium processing will last forever. A wood burner using a beacon to continuously draw energy. There's always a way to make the base better. In this case, I can use the foundry to make belts. That's 50% extra productivity. To make the chemical science production faster, I want to use beacons and redesign this layout using underground belt weaving. If you suddenly start producing more blue science, you also have to increase the engine production. There's always a new bottleneck, this time it's steel. I haven't researched steel productivity yet, so let's just double the amount of foundries. Okay, very nice. I'm in mining productivity 9 and I'm about to get the first level of steel plate productivity. But before I can go to Gleber, I have to also produce the golden science packs. They are required to research the biolab. So let's set up production. 
I already make low density structures and processing units. Which means I only have to set up a subfactory for robotic frames and electric engines. Initially I wanted to produce both products on top of each other, but I changed my mind. This will be quite a long pipe to get lubricant. As I said, LDS and processing units are rocket parts, so I already set up production in the last episode. The Golden Science Pack is the most expensive, so using the best assembling machine and productivity modules is a must. Okay, done. I can see the first golden bottles on the outgoing belt. So, finally, the moment you've been waiting for. Packing my bag, or rather, my rocket, to go to Gleba. My cargo transport ship should have all rocket parts on board all the time. Here you can see all the items I need to kickstart a Gleba base quickly. And without further ado, let's launch all of it into space. One more thing, I just realized that I don't use foundries to make low density structures. That's a big mistake, obviously. So let's refactor this subfactory and use the overpowered foundries. Okay, this is so much more efficient, especially when it comes to the plastic consumption. And remember, I only have four crude oil patches. Finally, let's launch my engineer to space. I can't wait to set up a base on Gleba and deal with the local pentapod population. If you've made it this far in the video, thank you for watching. If you want me to make more and better content, consider supporting me on Patreon. It would be very much appreciated. And if you are not subscribed yet, please press the button. Or do you really want to miss the next episode on Gleber? See you there. Bye.